Welcome back to the shop everybody. Recently I made a letter bank with a clear glass front on it. In this video I'm going to show you how to produce that bank. Now it's a little complex but stick with me and I'll get you through it. Now before we begin as I always say there's a hundred different ways to do these things. This is the way that I do it. So let's get started. I've already opened up the screen here and the work area is 14 inches by 14 inches square. I have the origin set in the center. First thing you're going to do is come over to your font tool and you're going to click in the middle or anywhere on your screen that you'd like to and you're going to type in the letter L or any letter that you're working on. In this case we'll use L. Push F9 to put it in the center. Now the font that I'm using over here is called College Demo Games or College Games Demo. I got that off of the internet. It's a free font and there's all kinds of videos on Carve Code to show you how to load new fonts into the system but in a nutshell you'll go to the free fonts, install them on your computer and when you open up Carve Code the next time they'll be in the drop down list and you can use them. Alright so back to this. Now we have our letter L here and we're looking for a desired size and I want the letter to be 12 inches tall and roughly 14 inches wide, the width of the stock that we're working with. So just go and create the letter over here and then go back to the transform tool on this side. Click the transform tool and scroll down to where it says width and height. Now I have the aspect ratio lock unlocked. If it was locked you'd see this joining lock here. But we want that unlocked in this case. So click on the lock again and you see that disappears. Again we want a 12 inch tall letter so by unlocking this I can distort this letter a little bit to suit our needs and it's not something you're going to see once you create this thing. The height we're looking for is 12 inches scroll down and hit apply and as you can see the letter has grown and it hasn't distorted enough that it's going to make that much of a difference as we make this project. The width looks pretty close to what we're looking for so we're going to leave that alone. Now we can go back and close out the transform tool. Now what we're going to need to do is some offsets. We need to create the wall right here and we need to create the recess inside that roughly here. It's a pretty simple process. Go down to the transform tool over here. We're going to start with three quarters of an inch so change this to three quarters 0.75. We want the offset inward in this case. We want to make sure that we have the resulting effect is selected which means it'll turn blue once the offsets created hit offset and there you have three quarters of an inch inward that creates the wall now what we need to create is the recess for the glass to set into so go back up to the offset size or distance change that to 0.25 actually don't change that to 0.25 you're going to want to change that to 3 16 of an inch because we're going to use a quarter inch end mill and when the end mill goes on a contour tool path here we want it to clean off the edge we don't want anything left that we have to sand here based on the size of the tool we're going to use so 3 16 of an inch is 0.1875 this time we want the offset outward same thing the selecting result click offset and there you have it. So now you have the outside wall of the letter, you have the inside cavity of the letter, and you have the recess for the glass right here. We can click out of the offset screen now, click off of the letter, and you can see it a little better. The recess is this little area here, the wall is the entire area here, and this is the outside size of the letter. And that's all there is to it. So the next thing is the tool pass. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. 
but I'm going to try to make this as simple to understand as I can. We're going to use this image to create multiple toolpath files and then we will select between those files or generate those files when we go to save toolpath. So let's go to the first toolpath and that'll be the inside cutout right here. I wanted to make it in three pieces, or I'm sorry, three toolpaths. You'll have a bottom section, the bottom being if the letter was sitting flat on your table. You'll have two center sections, which I'm calling those the donuts, and then the top section that'll hold the glass. The bottom section, I wanted the back to be encapsulated or included in the bottom piece. I didn't want to have to glue another piece on the back of the letter. So the way we create that is select the inside line right there. Come over here and double click on your tool paths. We'll go down to create area clearance. And we're going to hog away this material in here. We're going to we're going to have a 3 quarter inch piece of stock we're working with. We're going to take away half of an inch out of the center here, which obviously will leave us with 1 quarter of an inch for a back and a bottom piece. Start depth is zero. Finish depth then is 0.5. We'll come down and select a tool. Again, these are all one quarter inch end mills. Select the tool. Scroll down. No need to change the tool number in this case. We do want to change the clearance strategy. We want offset. We don't want it going back and forth. Machine safe height is correct. We have to define the material again. As I said, it's three quarters of an inch. All these pieces will be three quarters of an inch thick. Hit OK. Now give it a name. And this is where it becomes important. Because we're going to need to differentiate between these tool paths when we go to save the tools into separate files. So this will be bottom cutout. Actually, let's not change it. Let's change it from bottom cutout to bottom pocket. Calculate that. And as you can see, it's going to remove all of this material. All right, so click up here and close that out. And I like to click off of the object over here to tool paths and click on these light bulbs to shut off the tool paths. It takes away the tools and it makes it a less confusing to look at. Now we're going to create the actual cutout for the letter on the outside line. Select that. Up here to contour or profiling tool path. This will be an outside tool path. We will scroll down. The finish depth will be 0.75 because we want to cut the letter loose. Again, quarter inch tool, yeah, quarter inch end mill, not quarter inch tool pad, quarter inch end mill. Select that. In this case, we want bridges because we don't want this letter to come loose. The bridge length I choose is a half an inch. I like them one quarter of an inch thick. I like 3D bridges, but because of this letter style, I'm changing this to 2D bridges and let's add those. I missed one point here. We want four, constant number four bridges. Mr. Capers wants to give his two bits on this lesson. And we'll go down here to a name. We've already defined the material thickness and this will be letter cutout. Calculate now. And as you can see, the tool is going around the outside and the letter will be freed at that point. Shut this back off. Click on the light bulbs again to remove the tool paths to make it easier to understand. So now we have the bottom piece completely programmed. 
Now what we need to do is create the next section, which is the donut section. Very simply, click on the inside line, highlight it. This will also be a profiling toolpath. In this case, it will be an inside toolpath because we don't want to go out into the wall of the letter. Finish depth in this case will be 75.75 or 3 quarters because we're actually going to remove this. Okay, so at this point we need to add bridges because we don't want the center piece coming loose, breaking a bit, or causing any other kind of damage. So we'll scroll down to bridges. In this case, I'm not going to allow the software to tell me where the bridges are going to be because it'll likely put one in a bad spot. So we're going to manually insert these bridges select edit bridges it'll open up this dialog box over here we want a constant zero there is no constant we're going to choose how many we want half an inch long one quarter inch thick again we're going to go with 2d bridges in this case and we're going to add them so click add and then come over here and choose where you want them. When the crosshair lights up, left click your mouse and you can insert one. Well, we'll put one there, we'll put one there, here, and here. And the reason for that is I want enough space from the corners to those tabs. We're done putting in bridges, close this out, come back over here, and all what's left now is to give the center section a name. So we'll call this Center Donuts. We're going to abbreviate that by D-O-N, basically because I can't spell donut. <laughs> and we're going to calculate now. Okay, so now what we need to do is create the recess for the glass to set into, or the top piece. Click the center line, go to Profiling Toolpath, in this case it'll be an inside because we want the tool to travel along this line and basically cut off just a little bit so the glass has somewhere to set into. Starting depth is zero, your finished depth will be 3.30 seconds of an inch deep which is 0.093 and that's based on how thick your plexiglass is. If yours is a quarter of an inch thick then you're going to need to create a one quarter inch thick or deep recess. Click to select the tool again we're going to go with a quarter inch end mill. Select that. No bridges. We don't need any of those. All we need that tool to do is go around that path one time and you have created your recess. So we'll give it a name and we'll call this recess top We'll calculate that, and we're good to go. So now we'll move on to saving the tool paths right here. This is where it can get to be confusing, but I'm going to do my best to explain this so that hopefully we can make it simple for you. Click Save Tool Paths. Now as you can see we have two screens here, or not two screens, two white areas on this screen. I call this side the active area, this side the inactive area. And we can select these tool paths and move them between these two places. So for example, bottom pocket is highlighted. If we click this arrow, it moves it over to the inactive side of the page. If we go through and we do this with all of them, they're all inactive and if we saved the toolpath as it is you would have no toolpaths. So what we'll need to do is pick and choose between these to create each individual component or toolpath file. We'll start with the bottom piece. So in order to cut the bottom piece we need the bottom pocket program or the bottom pocket toolpath bring that to the active side and we also need to re remove the letter from the stock so we need to cut it out that's why we needed this path right here so bring this one over by highlighting it that creates the bottom pocket 
that cuts the bottom piece loose. You'll come down here and save the toolpath as bottom two T's Vernon one M <laughs> part and you'll save it as a habit I'll click it twice yes I want to override it it's not really overriding but that just ensures that it's there so now we have the bottom part with these two pieces. These toolpaths are not going to happen because they're not on this side of the page. Now we'd like to make the donut section, so we'll take this piece, the cutout, we still need that. The bottom pocket, we don't need that any longer. We'll highlight that one. Use this arrow to get it out of the active and into the inactive area. And we're trying to make the donut, so we want this toolpath, or the two middle sections. Highlight that one. Bring that one back over to the active area. Come down and give it another name. Center parts. We'll put the letter L in there just to designate that it is the letter bank that we're working on. Save that. Again, we'll click it twice. Yes, we'll override. So now we have the bottom component, the center components, and we need the top. We'll take the center donut section and remove it, put it back into the inactive area. We need the recessed top. Bring that back in. And in this case, we do need the center donut because it's going to remove the center portion of the letter and also create this recess top. So bring the center donut section back into the active area down here and save that as top of L. We save that. Second click. Coincidentally, the items in the active side are completed with the top line first. So you'll need to invert those lines in the correct order so that the cutout is the last procedure. Click on the item, click the down arrow, and put it in the proper sequence. And then name the toolpath and save it. Now you have three separate files to create three separate parts that are located in, in this case, my computer, they're located on the desktop. Top of L, center parts, bottom part. Depending on which piece you're going to make and depending on which G-code sender you have, obviously I have a Shapeoko, I have Carbide Motion. I'll open Carbide Motion and go to each one of these files independently and create the parts that I need. Now to cut the glass out, you will take the center donut section, this is the way I did it anyway, take the center donut section and set it on top of your plexiglass, use it as a template, draw the line on the inside, remove the donut section, and increase that line by the three thirty seconds of an inch. Take it over to your bandsaw and cut it so that it fits into the recess. And there you have it folks. That's how you can create a letter bank. Now the one step I left out was the slot in the top. I did that by hand with a handheld router and a guide on the router sliding back and forth. You can actually see this in the build video and I'll leave a link to the build video in the in the description of this one so that you can go back and use it as a reference but at any rate I hope you got something out of this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope maybe you learned something from it as always give me a like comment and share subscribe if you haven't already done so and as always we'll catch you on the next one <laughs>